Hi everyone. In this video, I just want to introduce thermal radiation. In particular, we will talk about what thermal radiation is and why it is important to us. Radiation is one of the three heat transfer modes. However, it is extremely interesting as it is the only mode that can transfer heat in a vacuum. Both conduction and convection require molecules moving or interacting in some way to transfer thermal energy from one source to another. However, radiation does not. We experience this every day as space is approximately a vacuum, and without thermal radiation emitted from our sun, we humans wouldn't even be here on Earth. So let's give thermal radiation a proper definition. Thermal radiation can be described as the electromagnetic radiation emitted by a certain body as a function of its temperature. So the particles in a given body are converting thermal energy, the particles banging around against each other, into electromagnetic energy. So the kinetic energy, the energy of the movement in the particles, is essentially converted to what we call radiant energy, which is the energy generated by thermal motion. So this definition is likely still pretty confusing to you, so let's break it down even more. A body just refers to literally anything of interest to us, whether it be your bowl of cereal, you, your cat, your keyboard, or a star in some distant galaxy. All bodies emit thermal radiation if they are above absolute zero. This is because at absolute zero, there is no particle movement, and therefore there can be no conversion from kinetic energy to radiant energy. So we should also give a broad description of electromagnetic energy as well, since we are using this term so frequently. Electromagnetic radiation is a term used to describe the waves of a body's electromagnetic field which travel through space. And you've likely heard of some of these before. They include radio waves, x-rays, ultraviolet rays, infrared, visible, and gamma rays. As we have stated previously, all bodies above absolute zero will emit thermal radiation. Therefore, shouldn't everything be getting continually cooler if they are constantly giving away energy? Well, no, because bodies can also absorb energy from everything around it as well. I just want to add that thermal radiation wavelengths are typically from 0.1 microns, which is in the ultraviolet range, to about 100 microns, which is in the infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. To heat up many molecules in organic material, i.e. like the water inside of us humans, the waves need to be at a certain frequency and energy. So to the left of 0.1 microns, there's simply too much energy, and to the right of 100 microns, there's simply too little energy. I like to think of this as waves in a pool. If you splash your hand down with enough force and time it correctly, you can get the waves bigger and more rhythmic. Now, let's think of this like the particles in our body absorbing the energy as moving faster around us, therefore heating up better. However, if your hand is hitting too hard or too little, or too fast or too slow, then you will have a hard time creating any decent waves in your pool. This is why thermal radiation is only considered over this certain region of wavelengths on the electromagnetic spectrum. We will talk more about the electromagnetic spectrum and wavelengths more in the next video. So, now that we have a rough understanding of what thermal radiation is, do you think that a body's temperature will affect how much energy is emitted from it? Well, of course, we have all experienced this. If you put your hand anywhere remotely close to a stove burner while it's on, you will feel the energy radiating from the coils. However, if the stove burner is off, you will no longer be able to feel the radiating energy, even though it is still occurring. This is because as we heat up the burner, there is much more kinetic energy within the particles that can be converted and turned into thermal radiation, which is essentially the conversion of kinetic energy into electromagnetic energy. Thank you for checking out this video and I hope it helped you gain a broad understanding of thermal radiation. In the next video, I'll be going through the properties of thermal radiation. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe to support the channel. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to address your concerns.